so Call Marker was nice enough to send over their B420 watt fiber laser for me to check out and make this video about it. And if you're not familiar with what a fiber laser is, it's basically a type of laser that can actually engrave onto metals. But with that being said, it's not limited to just metals as you can see. And it's able to do this extremely fast with some really nice details. And what you're seeing right here is real time engraving, so I'm not speeding this up whatsoever, which definitely isn't bad for only 8 seconds. On top of that, you can do some pretty interesting engraving techniques with this, like this 2.5D or 3D engraving. And it's actually pretty easy to do as well, but I'll show you that later in the video. But first we need to actually assemble the laser and get it all set up. And this is everything out of the box. And it even comes with a secondary lens. And your lens will dictate how big of a work area you have, along with accuracy. So it's definitely nice to have both options. They also included a handful of test materials, so at least you'll have something to use and test out, so you can get a hang of using the laser itself. And all the parts of this laser are actually made out of metal, and everything feels nice and sturdy. But anyways, let's get this whole thing put together. And it does have a pretty good instruction manual, which was easy enough to follow. And here it is all set up. And honestly, it has a pretty small footprint, especially if you compare this to my 50 watt laser, which definitely takes up a bit more room. And I even put it on its own cart so I can move it around. And this B4 laser engraver does have a 50 watt and 60 watt option with the same form factor. So if you need that extra power, you have that option. But anyways, if we look at the front of the machine, you can see that it has some very simple controls. Like this emergency stop button, which will cut all powers of the machine right away. And it has its main power button on the front as well. And these other two buttons are focus controls. And these will allow you to raise and lower your laser head. And even with this being powered, you can see that it moves pretty slow. But this does help with dialing and your focus to make it perfect. And there's even a hand crank at the top if you need to move this without power. And it does have some laser guides that will help you focus this to the material you're going to be engraving on. And you just want to make all of these converge to one point. And you can see the two laser pointers on the underside of the laser head. And out of the box, these are set up for the 110 millimeter lens and can be readjusted if needed. And they do have the focus point on the side of the machine as well in millimeters so you can set that up easily. And surprisingly they actually took the time to write this in the book as well along with the focus point for the other lens. And they also go over in detail how to do this yourself if you need to. And there's also two buttons on the front of the laser head and these are to activate the red lights or to start your laser engrave without having to use the computer. And you might have noticed that there's a handle on top of this and that's because this entire laser head can come off and be used handheld. And that's why the cable on the back of this is extra long. And it also comes with this little cage that kind of just bolts on around the lens. That way you can make sure you're always in focus. And I honestly don't see myself using this feature very often, but it's good to have. And to actually operate this laser, you do need to use a computer with either some free software called EasyCAD or a paid software called Lightburn, which is a one-time fee of $150. And I use Lightburn with all of my lasers, so I'll be using it in this video as well. This did come with these little metal sheets to do testing on, but I'm going to use it as a backing for now so I can do a material test engrave. And this will help protect my work area just in case things get too hot or go through the metal. And I really suggest doing this to every material you're going to be engraving on. It pretty much takes all the guesswork out of doing this. And this is just a simple stainless steel card. And if you look in the manual, they actually have some settings that will change the color that you can engrave on stainless steel by mostly just changing the frequency. And it would be helpful to have more examples for other materials as well. And this is the same material test on an aluminum business card. And you can see it actually made a hole through it at one point. So definitely another good reason why you want to do this. And when you're using this laser, make sure that you have some sort of ventilation setup because you're burning metals and you don't want to be breathing that in really. And I'm just using some ducting and inline fans and pushing the exhaust outside. And since we're on the topic of safety, make sure you're using eye protection with this as well. And seeing that this laser came with some, I'll be using that. And you might have noticed that there's a lot of threaded holes on the build surface. And this is so you can mount your guides to it and set up your parts in the same spot every time. So if you're doing a bulk order, everything should come out exactly the same. And if you are making things in bulk, it does come with a foot pedal that you can use to start up the laser and keep both of your hands free. And of course, for the video's sake, I'm using my hand to start this just so you can see it in action. And with these kind of lasers, you can do vector line work or you can do full on pictures that will come out in grayscale. And there's definitely a lot of trial and error when it comes to these. But once you figure out your settings for the material you're working with, you can get some really nice results. And even with this engraving, I don't have it tuned in perfectly and you can see the card kind of warping, but the end result still looks pretty good. I just need to turn down the power a little bit. You can also use this to add or remove markings from tools or really any material that this laser works with. But getting rid of markings isn't the cleanest process as you can see, but adding them to a clean area is a really good way to add a professional touch to things, as you can see on this brass part. And you can also use this on 3D printed parts. So you can add some finishing details and make things look a little bit more finished. And I really do think it gives you 
you a leg up on other people 3D printing parts and making products out of them, and it only takes a few seconds to do. And if you're wanting to do round objects like bracelets or rings, you can easily do this using one of the rotary tools. And this smaller one here is pretty much made for jewelry making. And it has spring-loaded jaws, so it makes it really easy to put your pieces into it. And as soon as you let go, it'll put pressure on your piece and hold it exactly where you want it. And the gripping posts on this can be moved around, so they fit with whatever you're working with. And it does come with a few different styles of these. But if you do take one of these, you can screw it in the back here where the spring is attached, and it makes it really easy to pull this out and reverse your clamping action. And to do this, you just have to reattach the spring going the other way. So instead of pushing in, it will pull out. So that way it will hold the ring from the inside, and you'll be able to engrave on the outside of it. And of course, with the other gripping method, it holds it from the outside, and you can engrave on the inside. And when it comes to the other rotary tool, this is a much bigger setup that can hold a lot more weight, and just larger objects in general. So just as a quick example, I'm going to use this 3D printed adapter, and to attach this to the rotary setup, you do have to use a tool on this one. But once you get it attached, it's not going to go anywhere. And this kind of ties in with the heavy duty nature of all this. And that also means it can easily engrave on tumblers like this one. But it's not only limited to bigger things like this. I was able to attach this to the machine itself, and use an expandable mandrel with it. That way I can hold a ring in place. And with my first go of it, it did work, but it didn't come out great, and there are some mistakes on here. And if you look in the software, there's a lot of settings that you can go through and change. So I did mess with some, and it came out a little bit better, but still not perfect. So like most things, it's just going to be some trial and error. And if you're doing jewelry making or metalworking, you can use this to mark designs and sheer metals that you'll be cutting out later, which definitely comes in handy. And this pretty much works exactly the same as the templates I designed, so anyone can mark out complex shapes without any trouble. But honestly, the laser can do a lot more than my templates can by marking the part and adding a bunch of details. All at the same time, and this laser can engrave pretty deep, so you really don't have to worry about this wearing away over time. And since we're on the topic of deep engraving, let's take a look at the 3D engraving this can do, which I actually find to be really interesting and opens up a lot of possibilities. And it's surprisingly easy to do. You will need a 3D file of whatever design you're going to be making, and just for an example I went to printables and got this design. And these files are meant for 3D printing, so we're going to have to convert this into an image that the laser can actually use. And luckily someone made a free converter to do just that. And all you really need to do is make sure you have the right orientation, and for this it's going to be top down, and you can pretty much leave everything else alone. And then just select the file you want to use, and everything will start up automatically. And you're going to end up with a grayscale image like this one, and the laser will be able to use this as a depth map, with the lighter areas being the higher spots, and the darker areas being the lowest. And for this piece I'm going to use a disc cutter and cut out a piece of copper, and I modified the background of the image so it's a circle now. And to make everything work, there are some important settings that have to be changed, or this will just engrave as normal. And these are all the settings that I'm using for this. And if you're using this as some sort of tutorial, take a screenshot of this. But the image mode is the most important part, and needs to be 3D sliced. And the power and speed settings will be different for every material you use, so you're going to have to test things out to find what's going to work for you. But with this, at least you have a starting point. But now I can click frame and adjust my material to make sure it's going to line up. And this laser did come with an acrylic shield that I'm going to be putting up, that's why everything is going to be orange. But it's definitely a welcome addition, so you don't always have to have glasses on around it, especially when you're doing these very long engravings. And these 3D engravings do take a while, even with this being as fast as it is. And this one took over 30 minutes to do, but it's also going over it a hundred times, which you can adjust in the settings to be even more, so you can have even cleaner engravings. And when it does finish, it will be kind of warm, so be careful when grabbing it so you don't burn yourself. And definitely make sure you have ventilation for this, because it makes a ton of metal dust that you really don't want to be breathing in. But here's the finished piece, and you can see how detailed this actually came out, with how much depth was taken out of the metal. And if you're doing this with gold or silver, you're going to want to capture all that dust. That way you can melt it back down and use it again. And here's the same design and settings on a piece of brass. And just because I thought it was a fun thing to do, I made a coin for a fellow YouTuber. He happens to have a full 3D scan of his body that he's currently printing out to make a one-to-one -one scale model of himself. So I had him send over just the head file and didn't tell him what I was doing with it. And I told him to watch my next video so he could see what I made. And I think it came out looking pretty good. And I made sure to do it in both copper and brass to see how they compared. And this is before I cleaned them up, you can see a lot of black spots and stuff on them. I also put his logo on the back of these with a 3D engrave as well. And with a quick cleanup and polish, they actually look like real coins. So definitely something interesting you could do and make custom coins. And even though this laser can do a lot of engraving and marking, it can also clean up your tools. So if you have some rusty pliers, you can easily remove that. That also means if you want to use this handheld, you can clean off rust from much bigger objects. And if you want to protect your work area when doing this, you can just put down a normal piece of white paper, because this laser will not affect it whatsoever. And you can see how well it cleaned this piece off, compared to how it was. So just another use case that I wanted to make sure you knew it could do. But overall, this is actually a pretty nice laser setup. And as you've seen in this video, it has a lot of different uses. And it seems to have a pretty high build quality. And these type of lasers are meant to last a very long time. And as you can see on the screen right here, they claim that it has a 100,000 hour lifespan. But at the same time, this is not a cheap tool. It's about 
$2,000 for the 20 watt laser. So if you're going to be using this for business and making money with it, then this price isn't that bad. Especially if you're comparing it to something like the Laser Pecker 4. That seems to be usually around this price, but this is only a 2 watt laser compared to the 20 watt laser on the B4. So even with the almost $500 difference, the B4 laser is going to blow the Laser Pecker out of the water every time, along with saving you hours in engraving time due to the power difference. But those are just my thoughts on my past experience with all of these different lasers. And the Calm Marker B4 just happens to be the best bang for the buck right now. And if you needed more power out of this unit, they offer up to an 100 watt unit, but it's going to cost you around $8,000. But as you've seen, this 20 watt laser can get a lot done. But anyways, I'll have links to everything I talked about in this video in the description below, so you can check it all out for yourself. Well, I think that's about it for this video, so if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.